Amen. I'm going to pass it off now to Pastor Liz. Let's welcome her. Amen. I am so overwhelmed in the good way with just God's greatness. And I am so excited about how the Lord is stirring up in his people. And we don't always see it on the news because the news doesn't like what God is doing. But I love hearing about these things that are happening um, with Tent America. And uh, there's another evangelist minister, Sean, who has been going around and doing these big, in parks, just showing up. And people are coming and they're just worshiping and declaring the word of the Lord. And it's powerful. And, pe and people are getting saved. And things are happening in Oregon and in California and throughout this nation. And it is so exciting to be part of the family of God. And it's so exciting to be part of what God is doing. And I am just in awe of just God saying, yes, I want you to do this and opening this door. If you don't want to be taken out of your comfort zone, be careful what you pray for. Since the new year, the Lord just keeps welling up in front of me and I've been just praying you know sometimes you pray things and you're like where did that come from and I have just been praying this Lord if you open the door I will say yes and I will walk through it and I had no idea what that looked like I had no idea what I was praying for and another thing that would just keep welling up out of me when I was worshiping was be it according to your word be it according to your word and a month ago out of the blue, I got asked to go on this tour, the Heal Our Land tour, and preach in what I think now is 11 different states and several cities in all of these states. And I will be preaching on the state of America and how we need to humble ourselves. We need to repent. We need to call out to the name of the Lord. We need to come together in unity as his children, as his family. And we need to partner with the purposes of God. So that the kingdom of God would be here at hand in this land. So that this nation would truly turn around and be a kingdom of God nation. And I know I have such expectancy in my spirit that the power of God is going to be released. And those Christians who will be there that aren't awake yet are going to be awakened in the Holy Spirit. And those who are there that don't know Jesus yet, they're going to come to know Jesus, the one who died on the cross for them, the one who loves them so much, but who calls them into righteousness and sanctification to be the pure and spotless bride. And I know that when we stand and we speak the word of God, that his power is released. So that is what's going to happen. And like we, what was mentioned from uh, Jesse and also Art, we all need to be praying for each other. Because I am one of the moms of this house. And when mom's away, the enemy tries to cause confusion and delay. And we don't want any of that in this house. And so you need to have each other's backs. You need to be praying for each other. You need to make sure that you are walking so closely with the Lord because we don't want any casualties during this time. We want to advance the kingdom of God. And look out for my kids, please. <laughs> well, this morning's message is called, back to the top, is called Course Correction. And the picture that came with this was a massive military ship, a naval military ship that realized we're headed in the wrong direction and we need to about face, we need a course correction. And over the last six months or so, the Lord has given me four different words, themes, sayings, things to pray about, focus on. Number one is the fear of the Lord. We need to come back to having a fear of the Lord, to having reverence. We need to do what is right in the eyes of the Lord. The second thing that the Lord has just continued to bring up to me over and over again 
in the last, since the new year, is that we need to remove the idols from the high places. Every high thing must come down. We need to regain. We need to occupy the high places. The third thing is that we need to train and prepare the next generation. We need to prepare them and train them to follow the Lord and to teach the next generation. If we just teach them to be amazing and powerful for the kingdom of God, we will miss it. But we have to teach them to be amazing and powerful for the kingdom of God and full of his word, but then to pass it on, and then to pass it on, and then to pass it on, so that two generations down the road, they're not in the same place that we are in right now. So we need to be training up the next generation. And number four, the Lord says, trim the fat. And it's interesting because the Lord keeps saying that to me. And I'm like, are you saying I need to go on a diet? Are you saying I need to watch what I eat? And he probably was saying that too. But he's also saying it to his bride. And this goes along with, it's something that the Lord has been saying to me for several months. But it also goes along with the word that Bruce Franklin brought about the bride of Christ being lean and disciplined and muscular. Because she has to fit through a narrow path. And as Christians, as the kingdom of God, as people of God, we need to trim the fat because we have to go through a narrow path and fit into an amazing dress. So let's talk about the fear of the Lord and how we need to obey and we need to walk in his ways. I have been spending a lot of time in Ezra My homework for you this week is to read the book of Ezra. Even if you've read it once every year for the past 20 years, I want you to read the book of Ezra slowly. I want you to actually think about what you're reading. I want you to reflect on it and say, how does this even apply to right now? You won't have to ask that very much because it's going to be really clear. But I would like to encourage you to read the book of Ezra. It's not long. It's like 10 chapters. But I was looking and spending a lot of time in the book of Ezra, and this is the return to Jerusalem. And the Jews are returning from being exiled in Babylon with the decree from Cyrus the king of Persia, which allowed them to go back to Jerusalem under the leadership of Zerubbabel. That's just such a great name to say. I remember Pastor Jesse, my lovable husband. He preached once about, once on lovable Zerubbabel. And I just love to say that. I think about it regularly. It's just kind of rolls off the tongue. Good old Zerubbabel. So they're under the leadership of Zerubbabel. So they may move back to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple. Even though there were troublemakers in the land, there were troublemakers trying to stop them. But those troublemakers got their just desserts and had to pay for the rebuilding of the temple. They went to complain to the king and write these letters and cause all this trouble. And the king not only said, leave them alone, let them do what they're going to do and what I've said they can do and stay away from them. But then he said that they are going to pay for it through the revenues, the trans-Euphrates revenues. It's fantastic. I love it. So when you read about it, you'll get to like laugh and cheer and on that just desserts. And so during this time, Ezra was the priest and he was in leadership at this time. But he was a very special man. He was devoted to studying the word and actually observing it in his life. He didn't just read the Old Testament. He didn't just read the scriptures and Yes, these are the scriptures. But he read them and he observed them. He followed them. He applied them to his life. It's important. So I want to pick up in chapter 9-ish. Yes, chapter 9. And so here we're here and he learns. It's kind of halfway through verse 1. 
leaders come to him and say, the people of Israel, including the priests and the Levites, have not kept themselves separate from the neighboring people with their detestable practices, like those of the Canaanites, Hittites, Perizzites, Jebusites, Ammonites, Moabites, Egyptians, and Amorites. They just throw that one in there when you're on the ites path, and then all of a sudden Egyptians and Amorites. They have taken some of their daughters as wives for themselves and their sons, have mingled the holy race and the peoples around them, and the leaders and officials have led the way in this unfaithfulness. When I heard this, this is Ezra. When I heard this, I tore my tunic and cloak, pulled hair from my head and my beard, and sat down appalled. Then everyone who trembled at the words of the God of Israel, gathered around me because of this unfaithfulness of the exiles. Jumping down to verse 5. At the evening sacrifice, I rose from my self-abasement with my tunic and cloak torn and fell on my knees with my hands spread out to the Lord, my God, and I prayed. He realized this grave sin that the people of God had disobeyed and married outside of Israel. And it's easy to just think, what's wrong with marrying different cultures and bringing in, that's not what this is about. All the other, all the other groups of people worshiped idols. And as you know, when you marry someone, you marry their family, you marry their past, you marry their generations, And you've got some major cleaning up to do, depending on the family that they're coming from, to do with generational curses and ties to idols and witchcraft. And that's exactly what has happened here. And so we have this problem. And so Ezra and the people who fear God, they they go before the Lord. And well, let's jump down to verse 11. Just before, for we have forsaken the commands you gave through your servants, the prophets, when you said, the land you are entering to possess is a land polluted by corruption of its peoples. By their detestable practices, they have filled it with their impurity from one end to the other. And so they cry out to God. And Ezra fasts and he calls the leaders to come together and they realize we need to repent we need to fast he's going to fast and pray and not have any food or water and for three days and but then they decide we are going to send back all of the wives and children that are part of those other uh, groups because we need to cleanse ourselves. now let's bring this to post Jesus dying on the cross for our sins. We, in this land, started out as a Christian nation, a godly nation, and over the generations have allowed culture to dictate, we have allowed demonic culture, because I'm just gonna call it what it is. We have allowed demonic culture to infiltrate our nation, one nation under God. And I hear all the time, oh, it's okay, that's just cultural. Well, it's just cultural, it's okay. Don't make such a big deal about it, it's okay. We don't wanna make people feel uncomfortable. I think that hell is really uncomfortable. And I care more about you rejoicing in the courts of heaven with me then you feeling uncomfortable when I say Jesus is the absolutely only way. And if you do not repent, which means turn from your wicked ways, you're going to be really uncomfortable. And I love you too much for that. The church, broad scale, not this church. You guys are all on fire and I love it. But the church really has become complacent. And they're so concerned about offending people and about being politically correct and all of that stuff. And so now we have a problem. We have a very broken nation 
and we have a very silent, scared church. But God's not finished with us yet. And it starts with a turning back to him and having a fear of the Lord. Like what we've heard my dad say about stop worrying about offending people, worry about offending God. And when we don't do something, the blood of that person and the people that it affects is on our hands. That's awful, but that's a truth. That's a kingdom principle. So we need to do something, and it starts with the fear of the Lord. Now here in Ezra, they went and they fasted and they prayed. And the exiles that had made these unions with these adulterous tribes, they, they sent the wives back, the, the Israelite men came back, they sent all the children back, which sounds so terrible. It really, and it was terrible. I can't even imagine how heartbreaking that was. But they knew this is part of setting ourselves apart, of cleansing ourselves, us as the kingdom of God. Now, please do not hear what I am not saying. I am not telling anyone to leave their spouses or kick their kids out. I am not saying that. We are post-Jesus. But I am saying that we need to cleanse ourselves and have a fear of the Lord and make sure that our house are places of worship and places full of the word of God. And one thing that really stood out to me with this was that Ezra was someone who studied the word and applied it to his life. We cannot just run on what we hear on Sundays and Wednesdays and a five little minute devotional as we're running out the door with our coffee. Those are all really good and important, but we can't rely on that. We won't know how to make godly righteous decisions if we are not full of this. We need to do our due diligence to be reading the word for ourselves. Filling ourselves with his word. You know, when we get in the car, my family laughs because as soon as my phone plugs in, it's, it's really loud and is reading scripture. Because when I drive, I just put on the Bible and I just have the scriptures going. And if you, if you ever drive past me and see me um, looking at my phone, it's because I'm kind of trying to underline, underline that part because I want to come back to it because that was really good. But I, I just, I want to encourage you to be filling yourself. I love, Ed and Suzanne have told me when they leave the house, they just put worship or scriptures that just play on a little boom box when they're not home. Just, just filling their house with the word of God. It is so powerful. And I want to encourage you to pick that up because Ezra knew what to do and he was godly because he was full of God's word and he applied it to his life. So we need to have a fear of the Lord. We need to be people who know the word of God and who live by it. Not in a legalistic kind of way. Again, don't hear what I'm not saying. We have the blood of Jesus. We have the Holy Spirit and God loves us so much even when we totally screw it up. Because I do, and he still loves me. But he calls us to walk in righteousness. Scripture says, John 14, verse 15, says, If you love me, you will keep my commands. The greatest commandment is love God, love people. But if we truly love God, not just say I love God because I want to go to heaven. If we truly love God, we live according to his word. That's what shows if we love God. You can say, I love Jesus all day long, but if you really do, you live according to his word. We tell our kids that. They're like, mom, I love you. You know, and you're, they're getting in trouble for something like just little rascal, not like really bad, but kind of just a little bit of a rascal. And they're like, but mom, I love you. I'm like, if you love me, you obey me. That's what the word of God says, and I'm using that. If you love me, you obey me. And they're like, okay. <laughs> My kids are great. So if we love God, then we obey his commands. People say all the time that they love God, but they're not living according to his word. And again, we need to have so much room for loving people into the kingdom. But once you're in the kingdom, 
once you, you're in the kingdom, now you're on the road to sanctification. Now you're on the road to walking with Jesus and saying no to the world and saying no to the life of sin and the culture sin kind of slippery slope things that people kind of think are okay. It's important that we ask God if it's okay. We have had an infiltration of idols within our culture. People lack true understanding because they have not avoided evil. Proverbs 28 verse 5, evil doers do not understand what is right, but those who seek the Lord understand it fully. Even when there's things we've like, I've always done this, and then all of a sudden we have that revelation of, oh my goodness, that is so wrong. Like I had that with yoga. I thought, as long as you're not meditating on certain things, these are good stretches. I was in kinesiology, got a minor in physical education, and we did yoga. And I'm like, I'll, I'll just pray while we're doing this. And thought that was okay. But then one day I learned that each yoga pose is connected to a lowercase g god, a demon god. And even though I didn't know it, they sure recognize it. I'm like, nothing to do with yoga is in my house. Clean it out. Get it out. If I see something, I'm like, ooh, those pants are really comfortable, but they say yoga. They're gone. I'm not putting that on my body. I'm not saying you have to do this, but for me, God has shown me that I can't have wiggle room. If, I, if we're going to walk in righteousness and we're going to go forward with the power of the Holy Spirit, we have to be ready because when the enemy tries to take us out, we have to know that we do not need to fear, that we need to stand on the righteousness of God. That means we need to stand so closely with him. This is what it means to trim the fat. And I'm jumping ahead. We'll get back there. But this is part of that. So we need to have true understanding and revelation of where we're at in this time and what parts of this culture are demonic and not okay. The people of God have made unions with an adulterous culture. It is time to separate ourselves. We are called to be set apart. There must be a cleansing and a wake up because it matters. Our life depends on it right now. Our children's lives depend on it right now. Our grandchildren's lives depend on it right now. If our grandchildren, for some of you great-grandchildren, come up to us one day and say, to, why is life like this in this nation? It is so hard and we have to be quiet about being a Christian and we can't do this and we can't do this. Can you look at them and say, I'm sorry. I didn't really want to walk in righteousness. It wasn't convenient. I don't want my grandkids looking at me. Whatever they're going to call me, I have no idea. I think my grandkids should call Jesse Poppy, but he doesn't like that one. <laughs> but they'll, I, don't, I want them to come and say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for standing for truth and for righteousness. Thank you for standing up for the unborn. Thank you for standing up for the immigrants. Thank you for standing up for the widows. Thank you for standing for the word of God and for the church. I want my grandkids to sit on my knee and say, thank you. I get to worship God freely. We are in this day right now where we make the choice of what our America is going to look like for our children and our grandchildren. The norms that we justify and make excuses for must be removed. If there's a check in your spirit or someone you love and trust, you realize they don't do that or they didn't laugh at that. Get into your prayer closet, ask the Lord, is this something I need to clean out? Is there something here that isn't good? I'm not asking you to go around and police everybody else. Don't. But you, if there's a check in your spirit, go to the Lord and say, God, I noticed this. Because he'll show you. He'll show you. All right, the number two. So we had the fear of the Lord. Number two, we need to remove, we need to tear down the idols. We need to remove that which has no part in the kingdom of God. 
earlier in Ezra, in Ezra 9, no, in Ezra 4. We can read about the surrounding, I love the way it says, the enemies. We, we know right away, it's not like they were friends. The enemies, the enemies of Judah and Benjamin heard that the exiles were, were building a temple for the Lord, the God of Israel. And they came to Zerubbabel and to the heads of the families and said, let us help you build because like you, we seek your God and have been sacrificing to him since the time of Esther had, Esther had on king of Assyria who brought us here. And they say, you have no part with us in building a temple of God. The world has no part in deciding how we build the church. The five-step plans of how to have a successful church, I will tell you the one-step plan of how to have a successful church. That is to obey the Holy Spirit and the leading of the Lord. If you have 10 people in your building or 10,000 people in your building, you are successful if you are following the word of the Lord and the guiding of the Holy Spirit. That's it. My 10-year plan, my 20-year plan, I'm 40, my 80-year plan is to follow the word of the Lord and the guiding of the Holy Spirit. That's what it is. And whether we're in a home church of 10 people or whether we're in stadiums speaking to thousands, that is successful when we are fulfilling what God has called us to do and purposed us to do. The culture, the cities, the, they have no place in deciding what makes you a better Christian. This right here. That's what we line ourselves up to and the Holy Spirit. So we need to remove these. There are some really great Christian movies, but there are some other fake Christian movies that are trying to tell you how to, you know, do church and tell you how to evangelize or tell you all these things. What's right for you in evangelism, someone else tries to do it, tries to copy you. If God didn't tell them to do it, they're going to fall flat on their face and they're going to be laughed at. Because the Holy Spirit will show you how to reach the person in front of you. Because he loves that person in front of you. So we have this situation where, where we need to remove the high places. Do you know, the Lord just kept highlighting this to me over and over. As I was listening in my car, as I was reading through these books in the Old Testament, of how we had these kings. We would get a godly king in Israel. And this is so wonderful but he didn't tear down the idols in the high places. And every time it was like the Lord just like made that echo, noise, noise, noise in my brain of like, they forgot to do this or they didn't think it really mattered. And every time I'm like, no, no, you're serving God. You gotta do that too. I would like have this little, come on, I want you to be successful. But when they didn't, if it didn't affect their reign, it definitely affected their, their son's reign, the next generation. So we need to be so, so intentional as things are shifting in the church right now in this nation. We need to be so intentional about following it through over the next four years, eight years, 12 years, and you can do the math, to continue to tear down the high places and the idols that are on the high places and to raise up godly people to be governing over those high places. Starts with the kids. Just saying, if you don't teach Sunday school, but you want to be part of changing this world for the purposes of God, you might want to pray about that. So we need to remove the high places. Now, Nehemiah follows Ezra is another fantastic book and we have heard a lot about Nehemiah lately and in Nehemiah we know he leaves his post as cupbearer to the king to lead his people in the rebuilding of the wall around Jerusalem he also has to deal with some troublemakers because anytime we're trying to do something for the purposes of God you got to know that troublemakers are on their way so over the last week, 
we've had some little troublemakers. And some of you who have known us for a long time know that this happens. And I just laugh. I'm kind of at laughing and crying stage now, to be honest. But I am still laughing and rejoicing in the Lord. In one week, we had three burst pipes and our HVAC is pouring out water. And I'm just like, praise the living God because he is on his throne and it's just pipes and it's just water and it's just flooring. And at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't, but our heart matters. And I know I know that the enemy would like us to be distracted. He would like us to be frustrated. He would like us to have all of these things. But he can't have that. This is too important. But there's troublemakers when God's people are at work in rebuilding the church and building up the walls to protect the people and keep the enemy out. And that's what we're doing right now. And so the enemy is trying to cause confusion and delay anytime he can. And this is why, just like Art said, we need to be on alert right now. We need to be intentional about praying, intentional about our words, our thoughts, not allowing arguments and division. We need to be together in unity as the people of God because we need to move forward. So God is moving things forward in this nation and in the church. We need to hear from the Lord. Instead of asking God to be in what we're doing and help us to be successful, we need to align ourselves with him and what he's doing. And we've seen that kind of happen with it. <laughs> Out, without our help, everything shut down in this past year. And we went from oh, well, that could never happen, and that could never happen. Stadiums are always full of events, so we could never use it for a Christian thing because, you know, they're always full. Well, we've had sports shut down, and we've had schools, and just all this stuff. God is using. God is using to wake up his people. God is using to present opportunities. God is using to stir in the hearts of his children that don't know him yet to realize there's got to be something more. I am so expectant for the testimonies that will be coming out in this next year of people who were at their lowest, 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 but Jesus met them. Because he does that. And I can't wait for those testimonies to flood in. Two important factors in both of these accounts with Nehemiah and Ezra is the issue, is the factors of building the temple and building up the wall. And that's what we need to be about. And that's what's happening with this tour that we're going on. And we want that fire, the fire of God to catch and to spread through this nation, how we need to really build up the church, not as some corporation with rock stars, but the kingdom of God, we the church, we the people of God, to build us up for his purposes and his plans, and then to build the walls. In Ezekiel 22:30, I looked for someone among them who would build up the wall and stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land so I would not have to destroy it, but found no one. Today is a different story. The Lord is finding his people in California and Oregon. The Lord is finding his people in Florida, in South Carolina. The Lord is finding his people in Texas. The Lord is finding his people in New York, believe it or not. The Lord is finding his people in Washington, D.C. The Lord is finding his people standing in the gap and praying for this nation and calling on his name. I am so excited for what he is doing. So we need to fear the Lord, we need to remove the idols on the high places, and we need to train and prepare the next generation 
to be mighty men and women of God and train the next generation. Last week, my dad's message was on the kids and on how important the children are and how we need to cover them and protect them, but also train them. And this has been something that's been burning in my heart for several months. We did three leadership camps that we did with the kids, focusing on worship, focusing on prayer and preaching, getting into the word, and they were so powerful. And then we did the VBS, which was fantastic and amazing. I have seen our children worship differently since then. And not just my three, but I'm saying our children. I have noticed something that has been birthed and stirred up in them. And it just is awesome to see them come into that. There has been so many different testimonies of kids like having visions of Jesus and him speaking to them. One of the visions, now I don't have permission to share this, so I'm not going to tell you who, but this one child was talking to their family member and they said that, they, that Jesus spoke to them. And the family member said, well, did you see Jesus? And they were like, yep. Yeah. Well, could you explain, or what God, could you explain what God looked like? And they're like, yep. Yeah. <laughs> so the intrigue. God revealed himself to this child as a massive heart. And the heart just spoke to this child and said, tell your grandma I love her. I love you. And I love these things over here that you're doing. As a mom, as a grandma, as an aunt, as a mom in the family of God, that's just something that you're like, yes. Because that child will never forget that day that God spoke to them. And so we need to present these opportunities. We need to train them. Sunday school is not, children's ministry is not about babysitting while the grown-ups really do something great for the Lord. Do you know, if those kids are not on fire for the Lord and full of his word by the time they're 12, miracles happen. But statistically, we'll have to wait until after college. We can't afford to wait till after college. The amount of baggage that comes on them in high school and college, if they're not living for the Lord, has a lot of undoing and cleaning up. That we just don't even need that. We don't even need that. So children's ministry and youth group, that is the most important thing that comes from this house. It really is. All of us, we know we love God, and we're living for God, and we're trying to, to grow together and be fellowship, and this is important. But if our kids don't know and love God, then we have lost. So if you care about evangelism, if you care about the kingdom of God, you need to ask the Lord, how can I plug in? How can I help grow this ministry? Maybe you need to drive a bus and go pick kids up. Maybe you need to help tutor kids after school. Our kids need you, mighty men and women of God, to sow into their life, Holy Spirit, to sow into their life, prayer, to sow into their life, the word of God. We teach them when we come and when we go, when we sit, when we lie down. It's just life. It's not just in the 45 minutes during Sunday school while the preacher is preaching. Maybe an hour if they're long-winded. That's not. It's way more than that. So we need to be teaching them and training them and preparing them. And Yanacy and her team is doing an amazing job, but they need reinforcements. Some of you are powerful intercessors. You need to be praying for the kids and the families in this church every day. They need it. Right from preschool. Those little ones, I love, my kids went to a Christian preschool and they learned all these scripture verses, A, B, C is a scripture for every letter and they could just ramble them off. And it's just so wonderful because you're like, uh, you need to be distracted for a little while, do your A, B, C's. And then they're like, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And they go through all of these A to Z, but the word is in them. And one day that scripture will save your life. That comes from Suzanne. So we need to fear the Lord. We need to remove 
the, high, the idols on the high places. We need to train and prepare the next generation, not just with memorizing words, but it needs to be full of the Holy Spirit. And it can't just be emotional Holy Spirit times. It needs to be grounded in the word. Because one without the other, you can fall off the bike on either side. But together, that is the way God intended it. Full of the Holy Spirit, grounded in his word. Amen. This is not about an election in, I don't know, 80 days or 95 days, whatever we're at right now. This is not about an election. This is about preparing the bride of Christ. This is about a course correction for our nation to truly be one nation under God, to be the kingdom of God together in unity, moving forward, pushing back the darkness. They're advancing in our nation. But God's not finished with us. He's like, wake up. All right, bride, I have this picture that I, I got as I was praying into this the other day. And it was just like, you know that terrible feeling when you oversleep? And all of a sudden, so this happened to me just, I wasn't getting married because I have been for over 20 years. But like last week or so, I woke up and realized that my alarm, the light was going, but the vibrate mechanism on my phone had stopped working. And so it normally wakes me up because I get up like two, sometimes three hours earlier than the rest of my household, and I like it that way. So I don't want them to hear an alarm. So I wake up, and I am late because I actually had an appointment. And I was like, oh, my goodness. So I'm like jumping out of bed. I'm trying to brush my teeth and get ready to run out the door because my alarm had been going for like 20 minutes, but it was just the light and no vibrate, shake the table kind of thing. And so I have this picture of the bride that all of a sudden someone comes running in and be like, you've overslept, you have to get up, it's time to go, we have to get you ready. And you know, just like kind of jump in the shower, brush your hair, do what you have to do to get ready because I feel like the church has been sleeping. The church has been sleeping and they have overslept. There have been a lot of calls to arms over the last four years, and probably longer than that. There have been a lot of prophets that have stood up and said, the Lord is saying we need to repent. The Lord is saying that we need to clean ourselves up. The Lord is saying, and all of this is true, and the message hasn't changed. The bride is just still sleeping. Well, now she's overslept. So now we need to hustle and get our act together for the kingdom of God. Because we are at a crucial time for the church and for this nation. Thank you, Jesus. And this takes us into number four, which is trim the fat. Jesus says, whoever in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. We can connect this to fear of the Lord. We can connect this to tearing down the high places. We can connect this to not feeling like training the next generation because we're tired. And I taught Sunday school for 20 years, so I think my season for that is done. If there are still kids, might look different, but they still need to be trained. We need to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow Jesus. We need to wake up, get ready, get cleaned off. That's the first thing. We get cleaned off. We get rid of the dirt from the day and get ready. The bride needs, hmm, I don't even remember writing this. The bride needs to have government over the influences of this land. 
And we hear people talk about the seven mountains or the seven pillars or some people have different numbers, but basically we're looking at over church and religion. We're looking at family, education, government, media, arts and entertainment, and business. We're looking at all these things that make up our culture and our society. We, the church, the people of God, need to have the final say and the government over all of those things in this nation. And it doesn't, doesn't start with, okay, we're taking over. No, it starts with training up our kids in excellence, but with a foundation in the word of God and led by the Holy Spirit. So what can we do about these things? We, I find myself sometimes feeling like I'm like swirling out of control with all of the great ideas and the prophetic words and being stirred up and, yeah! And I'm like, so, <laughs> then I'm back to my little life. And how do, what do I do about it on my day to day? There's the big picture that we need to understand. But then there's also us in our day to day of what that looks like to be sowing the word of God into our children and our grandchildren in love, filling them with the Holy Spirit, teaching them good manners. All of these things, it's the day-to-day. -day. Training our kids for college, preparing them, getting them to think at a young age. Let's start praying about what God wants you to be when you grow up, how he wants to use you. Let's change our verbiage instead of, what do you want to be when you grow up? Let's train our kids to like, Let's pray about what plans God has for you. What spouse God has for you. Let's pray about that. It's not about who you have a crush on. Let's, let's change that. Let's shift that for our kids so that they're not running off after people that are just going to bring idols back into the camp. We want them to be partnered with the purposes of God with education, with careers. We want our nation to change, but it starts with what we're doing right now in the day-to-day. -day. And so I want to encourage each of you this week to spend some time with the Lord and say, God, is what I'm doing what you want me to do? Because of course we have families. We have our relationship with God as our first responsibility. We have our families as our next responsibility. We have jobs as another part of the responsibility. But then say, Lord, how would you have me serve in my home church? Because whether it's parking lot, whether it's an usher, whether it's helping with the kids, we should all be involved in what the family of God is doing. And then, God, how can I serve in something outside of the church? volunteering somewhere in a food pantry, volunteering in the crisis pregnancy center, volunteering with tutoring or reading with kids in some way. If you don't have time to watch your programs, that's okay. It's okay. If you're too tired by the end of the night to scroll on Facebook, it's okay. That trash will be there. It's not going anywhere for a while. But what's not okay is for the world to continue to infiltrate our education, to continue to take over our government, to continue to take over our medical field, to continue to take over our church. That's what's not okay. And if we keep putting it off because we're tired and we're busy, then God will be, he's searching. And is he going to find you? I hope he finds me. I hope. I'm just like. And in this season, I think he did. <laughs> and I'm excited and freaking out all at the same time. I want to close with reading Isaiah 61, verses 2 through 4. And this is from the, the Passion Translation. So I asked Luke to put it up there. Because my particular Passion Translation only has like Psalms and Proverbs in the New Testament. It didn't even have Isaiah. But this came up when I was searching for something. I'm like, this is so great. But it really stirred in my heart. And so I want to share it with you. I am sent to announce a new season of Yahweh's grace and a time of God's recompense. Which in other translations says vengeance on his enemies. 
to comfort all who are in sorrow, to strengthen those crushed by despair who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful bouquet in the place of ashes, the oil of bliss instead of tears, and the mantle of joyous praise. Instead of the spirit of heaviness, because of this, they will be known as mighty oaks. Because of the oil of bliss, because of the mantle of joyous praise instead of heaviness. In this world where people are so afraid and so uh, downtrodden and so confused about what's going on, there is a major heaviness out there. But as you, the people of God, wear mantles of joyous praise and the oil of the Holy Spirit and just bliss for the greatness of our God, then you will be known as mighty oaks of righteousness, planted by Yahweh as a living display of his glory. You are planted by the Lord as a living display of his glory. Allow his glory to shine through you as you smile by your eyes. And smile by your face as soon as you get out in the parking lot. A living display of his glory. They will restore ruins from long ago. The ruins of our church and the walls for the, that surround the people of God. You will restore ruins from long ago and rebuild what was long de devastated. You will renew ruined cities. We have some ruined cities right now. People of God, he is going to use us to restore and to renew those ruined cities physically, but there's also some ruined cities spiritually, and God wants to use us if we say, yes, you open the door, I will walk through it. God, I say yes to you. God will use you to renew ruined cities and desolation of past generations. We need to walk in spirit and in truth, in the fear of the Lord. We need to remove the idols on the high places. We need to train and prepare the next generation, and we need to trim the fat so that we are walking in discipleship with Jesus, hearing the Holy Spirit, and obeying what he's telling us to do because we are people of faith. We are the people of God. And this is his kingdom. This is his nation. And this is his land. And the enemy can't have it. And so we, the people of God, are going to stand. We're going to stand for righteousness. We're going to stand for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And it starts with us. And it goes forth. So please stand. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. God, we thank you and we praise you that you sent your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sin. We thank you that he became a curse so that we could receive your blessing. We thank you that by his wounds we are healed. We thank you for everything that was accomplished so that we could shine for your glory, so that we could partner with you for your purposes and plans for this nation and for the nations of the world. Father, I thank you that you have created us to be your family that we live in the inheritance, that we receive the inheritance of your kingdom. Father, I just pray today that you would strengthen, that you would strengthen your church, that you would strengthen my brothers and sisters in the Lord, that you would set ablaze the fire that is inside of them that no man could put out in the name of Jesus. No restrictions can put out in the name of Jesus. I speak forth the power of the Holy Spirit into your lives today to come forth and shine forth with the glory of the Lord in Jesus name. God, we open up our hearts to you. We open up our lives to you in Jesus name. We thank you that it is you that gives us breath. We thank you that it is you that fills our lungs. We thank you that it is you that heals the sick and raises the dead in Jesus name. God, we thank you that you thunder. We thank you that you thunder in the atmosphere and you thunder here on earth for your power to be released. And we say yes to you. 
to your purposes and plans in Jesus' name. Let it be according to your word. Let it be according to your word, Lord God. Find us standing in the gap and building up the walls for your kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Just before we're dismissed, we want to uh, give an opportunity for people to sow into this bus tour. None of this will go to Pastor Liz personally, but the Bible says, how can people hear unless they're told, and how can they be told unless someone's sent? All right, so there's part that we have as well in sending uh, this team out there because it, it costs a lot of money to drive a big bus and, and, and make all the arrangements. And so uh, what we're going to just ask you Luke, to do Luke is... You can put up the, the one thing that has it website at the top. Yeah, you can give through there, but we're going to take an offering here as well. Um, and on your, on your app or on your smartphone, what we've done is created a category on your giving called special offering. All right, so if you're not... Uh, prepared with anything, but you just have your credit card, you can give that way. You can, again, give by text. You can give just by check. You write it out to AIC. Just put on your check, bus tour or something like that. Uh, and you can drop them in these offering baskets before you go. There's two behind the camera right there, or there's uh, boxes around the exits as well. So uh, we just encourage you to sow whatever the Lord would uh, lead you to do. We encourage you to give generously to that. So just put your hand on your heart. I'm going to invite the prayer team to come on up. Uh, after we close, and if you need a touch of the Holy Spirit, if you need the Lord to work in your life, and you need an answer to prayer, you come forward and you get what God, what heaven has for you today. But just put your hand on your heart and let me bless you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the gathering of the people of God in this land. Lord, I thank you that, Lord, it's like the waters that start off at ankle deep and then go to the knees and then up to the, up to the neck, and soon it's a river that we cannot cross. Lord, we thank you that that is the eternal pro, uh, provision and promise of God for the people of God. And, Lord, we welcome the moving of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We welcome your Holy Spirit moving and training in our families, Lord, for our kids to rise up with the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we speak it into our schools. We speak it into uh, our neighborhoods, God, that we would be those ambassadors who bring your kingdom and the power of God with us. And so people and family of God, I bless you. I say the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his face towards you and give you his peace. And so... God blesses you and puts his name upon you. You are his people. Hallelujah. We are dismissed. God bless you. Prayer team, come on up. And uh, if you want to give an offering, please do that now. God bless you all.